Today, I'm going to talk about the best leadership advice I've ever received, and we'll roll out a few new segments. I am Simon the Zealot, and you are watching Beyond the Crossroads. Let's kick it. Okay, quick admin note, just want to let you all know that I'm using these first few episodes to tinker with the format and content of this show. So as I produce more episodes, they'll become more standardized and uh, you'll see that. So just keep that in mind. With that said, today I'm going to talk about the best leadership advice I've ever received. The interesting thing about this advice is that it was basically an afterthought of a statement on an unrelated topic. So during my time at TBS, uh, Captain was giving a class on patrols, and at various points in the lecture, he would supplement the textbook content with his experiences from deployment. During one such occasion, he was talking about the Marine Corps' efforts to train a particular country's army on patrolling principles and methods. This army was notorious for its flimsiness lack of order, and propensity to scatter at the first sight of trouble. Maybe in response to a collective groan about the deficiencies of this army, or maybe just because a thought occurred to him, uh, the captain added this profound statement to one of his illustrations. Lead by example and work with them a little. That's all you got to do. So this really stuck with me. Maybe because it was a calm and contravening response to the noticeable amount of scoffing in the class, or maybe because it said so much in so few words. Let that statement sit for a minute. Lead by example and work with them a little. That's all you got to do. As I've thought about this advice since then, I've distilled two major lessons that I want to pass on to you. The first is that this advice effectively covers all of your public conduct. You're either leading by example, and that's kind of like autopilot, or you're actively working with somebody on improving a certain skill, and that's like manual control. Let me expound on this a little further. Leadership by example can also be considered leadership by habit. These are the things that you have trained yourself to do that will affect the people around you without your consent and sometimes even without your knowledge. You are modeling behavior for better or for worse. Especially as a Marine, your Marines are always watching and will take cues from you by observing your disposition and conduct. Now, this applies to leadership in general, but especially to military leadership because authority and disobedience have more meaning in interactions between superiors and subordinates. So if Marines have to listen to you, they are going to scrutinize you and take cues from you more readily than in other forms of leadership. Now, working with them a little can be considered leadership by intervention. This is you drawing on your knowledge, experience, and expertise to coach somebody from ignorance to proficiency. This could be an actual demonstration, uh, this could be conversation, or this could be instruction. Uh, like a hip pocket class or an informal lecture, etc. The uh, big idea here is that you are informing their decision. You're informing a decision or an action without actually doing it for them. Without you stepping in, uh, the person or the team that you're working with would be worse off. So that's why it's leadership by intervention. Leadership by intervention can be applied to anything from personal troubles to combat operations. 
Now, there are three strong cautions that I will offer you with all of this. The first is that you have to legitimately care about yourself and your people. If you don't care about being somebody worth following, you will not invest the resources into making yourself better. And as a result, uh, you'll be useless to the people around you. You will have neither the respectable or admirable personal qualities and behaviors, nor will you have the general or technical knowledge to impart to anyone. When I say, when I say uh, care about your people, I also include people that you don't like and your bottom performers. Now, if you can pull this off at OCS and TBS where leadership is uh, temporary and where it's easy not to like the people around you, you will be miles ahead of your peers when you graduate. The second caution is that you have to have patience. You need to keep people's potentials in mind. If you treat people based solely on who or how they are when you meet them, you will smother whatever potential they have to improve and nobody wins at that point. The other person doesn't win because they don't get any better in their proficiency or their conduct. You don't win because you have to continue dealing with their weakness and you've also squandered the uh, opportunity to make them better. And the organization doesn't win because it has to deal with all of that. So you're actually creating a disproportionate loss for your organization. Now, as much downside as there is, uh, there is just as much upside, if not even more. By passively setting the example and actively helping a person improve, you are creating victory. So even if you don't get any uh, recognition, the person that you helped becomes better and you and the organization win as a result. Uh, recognition or not, there's no greater accomplishment than changing a person's trajectory for the better. If you can do that, you've essentially won a heart and mind. With enough hearts and minds, you can change the organization and I dare say the world. Now, the last caution I have is that uh, if you're going to change somebody's trajectory, it had better be for the better. If you make somebody worse off, not only will you have to answer for it, but you'll also need to reevaluate your value system. So my advice is that you should just consider your value system now before you have any authority so that you can avoid disaster later on. The second distilled lesson that I want to share with you uh, with this advice is that this advice is your quick, easy and portable leadership reference. It boils leadership down to simple and actionable ideas that you can test and verify. Think hip pocket leadership. If you can do these two things well, lead by example and work with your team to make them better, both individually and collectively, you've got two key ingredients for your uh, team or your Marines uh, to succeed. And if your Marines succeed, they win, you win, your command wins, the Marine Corps wins, the country wins. So lead by example and work with them a little. That's all you got to do. Something on your mind? So this segment is basically quote of the week, except I've renamed it food for thought. Today's food for thought is a quote by Voltaire. Uh, it goes as follows. No problem can withstand the assault of sustained thinking. I really like this quote because it suggests that there is a solution to every problem that we face and it just needs to be discovered or more appropriately extracted. But in order to be discovered or extracted, we have to keep searching and inventing and leveraging the tools that we have available against whatever problem we're facing. This quote suggests that having optimism and the impetus for action is the proper attitude for problem solving. Think of whatever problem you're facing as a Rubik's cube. If you continue to turn it, observing, learning, and applying that knowledge, 
you will eventually solve it. Now, obviously, the idea is better suited for intermediate or long-term problems because it implies the availability of time. However, it could work in the short term as well. You'll need to consider the thought and see how it plays out in your own life. Ready to roll out! For this last segment, I'm going to provide an outline for a PT session, and you can customize it to fit your needs. I will also publish a printable version of the outline on uh, Google Drive, which I will link in the uh, description. Now, spelling out the actual exercise uh, is going to take too long, so I'll just summarize it here and refer you to the Google Drive for explicit instructions. So this first uh, PT session is a group PT session, and it is an upper body relay. So check out the Google Drive for instructions on how to carry it out and what uh, all you'll need. So that's it for this show. If you have any comments, suggestions, or requests, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, as always, remember, it is not about you. Stay hungry, stay humble, stay out of trouble. Take care. I'm about to drop the hammer and dispense some indiscriminate justice.